Good local time, everyone. My name is Audrey Tang. I'm Taiwan's Digital Minister and Chair of the National Institute of Cybersecurity. It is a tremendous honor and a privilege to deliver the keynote at Citra's online event exploring ways of shaping technology to support, not to hollow out, democracy. This gathering of the enlightened takes on great significance, giving its staging in conjunction with the International Day of Democracy, an opportunity to double down on delivering compassionate, effective, and responsive governance tailored to the needs of the people. Now, there is no question that democracy is facing unprecedented challenges at every turn, from authoritarians seeking to harness the power of AI to destabilize and undermine our free and open societies. These efforts come in all shapes and sizes, but the most insidious ones target our fabric of trust, polluting social media platforms founded on Article 19 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the right to freedom of opinion and expression. In 2016, we witnessed a bellwether of sorts in public communication. The venerable Associated Press Style Guide declared that the word Internet would no longer be capitalized, signifying its pervasive use. Unfortunately, this ubiquity also cleared a path for persuasion industries to engage in a large-scale personal data collection and overturn privacy norms, marooning many on desert islands of polarization. Deep fakes going fully interactive this year, have sullied online interactions, opening the door wider for fraud and manipulation at an unprecedented scale. Consequently, democracy finds itself at a low ebb. Autocracy is on the rise, utilizing crafted censorship and electronic surveillance systems. And the truth of the matter is global internet freedom has declined for the 12th consecutive year. And today, only a billion people live under the umbrella of democratic systems, while more than double toil under authoritarian rule. It is said that there are two sides to every coin. While certain emerging technologies bolster authoritarians, some may yet be employed to revitalize democracy. How best to combat the pervasiveness of online harms? The solution lies in plurality, or technology for collaborative diversity to increase the bandwidth of democracy. And POLIS is a prime example of this ethos. Taiwan started its journey with POLIS in 2015, when Uber and sharing economy startups took the world by storm. The relentless march of innovation and profit clashed with the livelihood of taxi drivers, triggering legal action and protests. This conflict also raged in Taiwan, and we were fortunate to have POLIS to track its roots and derive shared wisdom from flame wars. Now, the beauty of POLIS is that participants and opinions are visualized on the same page, as well as how divided the groups are. Despite initially polarized opinions, POLIS consistently promotes common points of view to bridge divides. POLIS does not just provide a visual mapping of democratic input, it also produces an interactive report updated in real time. And this has applications for all issues of international import. Twice, Taiwan has worked with fellow democracies like Finland through POLIS. The first in 2019 amid escalating trade tensions, when some fear that Taiwan will be caught in the middle of an epic struggle and sidelined from economic integration. Through the AIT at 40 digital dialogues, ideas were canvassed across the Indo-Pacific on how to increase defense, economic, and people-to-people -people exchanges between Taiwan and the US. These were then swiftly implemented by both sides. In 2020, Taiwan explored privacy-preserving contact tracing and various pandemic countermeasures, again with avid global participation. It is notable that this was not limited to police opinion surveys. Solutions were co-created. In recognizing which were aligned with societal values, civic hackers around the world proceeded to animate those ideas through hackathons. 
Now this year, Taiwan is taking police to a whole new level. In response to the rapid popularization of AI, the Ministry of Digital Affairs has joined the Collective Intelligence Project to launch alignment assemblies. Other partners include OpenAI, Anthropic, the GovLab, and Getting Plurality Research Network. The goal is to give the people a chance to contribute to the safe and sustainable development of AI, as well as identify and mitigate risks caused by this emerging technology. Throughout July, we co-created with the people through Polis, exploring topics on democratizing AI futures and setting the agenda for face-to-face -face deliberative workshops in August and September. The records will soon be published as open data, facilitating the training of AI language models aligned with Taiwan's distinct experiences. Now, to ensure authentic voices are heard in alignment assemblies, two features were introduced by polis.tw, which is maintained by the PETAS team at the National Institute of Cybersecurity. First, we extended POLIS to integrate with trusted external sign-on systems, ensuring the authenticity of participant. Furthermore, more importantly, with the help of AI Objectives Institute, we can see here that Talk to the City site provides real-time AI-assisted summarization, translation, and interaction. This chatroom empowers individuals to engage in nuanced dialogues with diverse opinion clusters, deepening cross-cultural understanding and empathy. Now take a look at this. Every dot here represents an opinion. It sparkles like a star in the darkness of the background. And the holistic reflections you see here form constellations, providing us directions on alignment. And for many participants, this is the first time they interacted with AI in the context of democratic deliberation. This occurred not as a solo conversation, but as an evolving group discussion for the collective good. In terms of AI governance, we believe that a democratic approach, not a technocratic one, is the optimal answer to what is an ethical and political conundrum of global proportions. The bottom line is experts simply cannot catch all use cases nor effects by ourselves. Just as with climate change, comprehensive statistics are needed on potential harms, including over-reliance, emotional effects, and information manipulation. But unlike climate change, interactions with AI are deeply personal. All indicators must be shared in a thoroughly privacy-preserving manner. It is felt that the safest way to operate here is to form coalitions of data holders and researchers mediated through trusted data altruism organizations to safeguard processing and aggregation of non-personal data on harms and preferences. Thanks to zero-knowledge proofs, privacy-enhancing technologies, and a GDPR-compliant version of POLIS pioneered by Citra, Worldwide alignment assemblies are well within reach. And step by step, let us build consensus on the boundaries of AI and shepherd its ongoing development, with interconnected local assemblies delivering specific directions for particular political and regulatory contexts. In closing, I invite all and sundry to participate in police conversations of scale and employ pioneering initiatives in the realms of collective intelligence to rein in societal risks while safeguarding human rights and democracy for generations to come. By drawing on the collaboration, curiosity, courage, and vision of the people, we can chart a deliberative and sustainable course for global governance and free the future together. Blessings for your attention and time, and congratulations to Citra for this exciting event. Live long and prosper.